Spirit, enter in, and in our hearts your work begin. Your dwelling place now make us, Son of the soul, O light divine. Around and in us brightly shine, O joy and gladness wake us, that we may be truly living to you, giving prayer unceasing, and in love be still increasing. Give to your word impressive power that, that in our hearts from this good hour as fire it may be glowing that in true Christian unity we faithful witnesses may be your glory ever showing. Hear us, cheer us by your teaching. Let our preaching and our labor praise you, Lord, and serve our neighbor. O mighty rock, O source of life, let your dear word in doubt and strife in us be strongly burning. Let we be faithful unto death, and live in love and holy faith from you true wisdom learning your grace and peace on us shower by your power christ confessing <coughs> I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father. Upon this here confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Maybe. 
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Heart most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Testament reading on his third Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring down, I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to, be, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, 
but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. For we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we, must, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us may receive what is due for what, we has, what, for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearances and not about what is in the heart. For if we are being ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him, him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old one has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as, if, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is grown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our next hymn. You may be seated.
sing that hymn later. <clears throat> grace, <clears throat> grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the epistle reading appointed for today from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, especially these words. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. This is the text. Last week I spoke about how we are now in that part of the church year where the focus is no longer on what Jesus did in coming into this world, but the focus is on how we as his followers uh, live out our faith here in this world. And I pointed out that this world is very often hostile to our faith. And so we face many challenges in trying to follow Jesus. We read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that this world and our outer nature is wasting away. The things of this world are only temporary. We talked about how the devil is constantly bothering us. In our gospel reading for last Sunday, the scribes from Jerusalem even accused Jesus of being in cooperation with the devil. And if Jesus was accused of that, sometimes the devil is so tricky that he can even cause people to accuse us of being controlled by the devil. Also from the gospel reading for last Sunday, we talked about how our families, our earthly families, may even be the ones hostile to our faith. That was the case with Jesus. His earthly family thought he was out of his mind. And sometimes our, our earthly families think we're out of our minds for following Jesus. These are some of the struggles that we as followers of Jesus have to deal with as we live in a world that is hostile to our faith. So as I'm preparing for today, I'm thinking, well, maybe I left you the impression that there aren't any good things about living here in this world as a believer in Jesus Christ. And if I did so, I'm sorry, because that's not the case at all. There are many blessings about living in this world. Even though this world is hostile to our faith, there are still many joys and blessings that we experience living in this world. And the first is what we are doing right now, gathering with our fellow believers for worship. It is truly one of the great blessings that we have as believers to gather. And, and that was made so very clear to us when for so many months during the pandemic, we were not able to gather for worship and join with our fellow believers and to hear his word and receive his sacrament. Thanks be to God, those days, we are starting to put those days behind us. As we gather for worship, we're doing what Jesus did. Even in his earthly ministry, we are told regularly he would go to the synagogue and gather with his fellow believers for worship. And we are told in the book of Acts also that the disciples, the followers of Jesus, spent much time in the temple praising God and gathering for worship. In the book of Psalms, we read the psalmist many places talking about going to the house of the Lord and worshiping. In the book of Psalms, it says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. One of the things, one of our goals when we worship and gather for worship is to give us a foretaste of heaven. That yes, we're still on earth, <clears throat> but someday we're going to go to heaven. And so a worship service is designed to get us to think about our heavenly home. And that's why everything we do and include in our worship service is drawn straight from the Bible, from Holy Scripture. Most parts of our liturgy are simply taking parts of the Bible where we have people worshiping and incorporating them into our worship service. And we know God is pleased with that worship when we do that because we're simply saying back to God what he says to us, where people were clearly worshiping in the Bible and God was pleased with their worship. We incorporate that into our worship service so that we can confidently worship, knowing that what we're saying and doing is pleasing to him because we're simply saying back to God what he first said to us. 
As Paul says in the text, for in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. Then later he says, we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. This longing for our heavenly home is sometimes referred to as heavenly homesickness, or another way of putting it is reverse homesickness. When you're homesick in the regular sense, you're homesick because you're away from your familiar surroundings. You're not at home where everything is familiar, and maybe you're separated from loved ones, and you get homesick. And that can make people literally sick because they miss their regular surroundings so much. Well, heavenly homesick is also a longing and missing something, but we're missing something that we've never experienced before. None of us have ever been to heaven, and yet we long for heaven. We long to be there, as Paul says in the text. We're at home, as long as we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We're not in our heavenly home. And so that is sometimes referred to as heavenly homesickness or reverse homesickness. We are longing and we are missing a place we've never been to before. We just know it's going to be great. It's going to be far better than whatever we have here and now. And we will be with the Lord and with our fellow loved ones also in heaven. So worship is definitely a time when we're living here in this hostile world, this world that's hostile to our faith, where we can experience joy, where we can experience blessings, even as we live in this hostile world. And what a blessing it is, especially in our country now, to have the freedom to worship. No one had to give us permission to come here today. We could freely come to worship and join with our fellow believers. And we know that's not true in other countries. Other countries, worship is forbidden, and they have to worship in secret. Otherwise, they get into big trouble with the authorities if they do so. But we can gather freely to worship the Lord here. <clears throat> we have special worship services, of course, at Christmas and Easter time. But another thing about our Christian worship is that every Sunday, no matter what season we're in, is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Even when we're in the season of Lent, which is usually a time of more somber reflection on our sins and Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross, even the Sundays in Lent are Sundays of celebration because every single Sunday, because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, every single Sunday is a celebration of his resurrection from the dead, the very foundation of our faith without which our faith would be useless. Another joy that we have here on this earth is the witnessing of our faith to other people. In some ways, that's the only reason we're still here on this earth as believers, is to give witness to our faith. As we read in the, in the epistle reading in our text for last Sunday, Paul said, I believe... At, we have the same spirit of faith as the one who said, I believed, and so I spoke. So we too believe, and so we speak. And what a joy it is to lead someone to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That for the sake of Jesus, all their sins are forgiven, and they are at peace with God and reconciled with God. We, we are leading them from death to life, from the death of sin and darkness and death, to the light of Christ and eternal life. There can be no greater joy than that and to witness our faith. And through that witness, the Holy Spirit leads someone to Christ. Most people are so blinded by the devil, they don't even realize they need Jesus. But when they do come to realize how much they need Jesus and how much Jesus loves them, they completely change. They can't imagine life without Jesus. That's how profound the changes are when someone comes to faith in Christ. As it says in the text again, He died for all, that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Jesus died for everyone because we're all sinners, and the most common sin of all is living for ourselves, being all focused on ourselves. 
and what we want and thinking it's my life. I'll do what I want. But once we realize that Jesus has died for us, completely paying for our sins, we want to live for him who for our sake died and was raised again. Or as it says later, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And again, when we try to witness our faith, we are met with hostility. Most often, it's not open hostility, especially in this country. It's more likely to be apathy. People just say, I don't care. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm totally wrapped up in myself and my own thing. It's my life. I'll do what I want. And so rather than facing open hostility when we try to share our faith, what's most common is we meet so many people who just don't seem to care, don't care to know about Jesus, even though without him, the end of their life will be very unfortunate and they will not go to eternal life in heaven. So worship and witnessing are what make life in this hostile world so much more bearable. In fact, in many cases, quite enjoyable. And those believers who are not regularly involved in worship and witnessing find it a very bleak world indeed. There's other things that we can enjoy in this world. Believe it or not, there are some rare occasions when the world's, the blinders are taken off and they, they realize, oh, well, maybe God's ways are right. It doesn't happen very often, but there are those occasional times when the world all of a sudden realizes, well, those Christians, maybe they do have things figured out and know what is best. And of course, at this time of year, we can enjoy the beautiful creation that God has made for us to enjoy. This is truly a beautiful world, and many of the things that about it give us great joy that we can enjoy. And here in Minnesota, we say that's true in all four seasons of the year, that there is something about this creation that we can enjoy. So yes, there are always going to be things in this world that are hostile to our faith. But there are also many things about life in this world that are still quite enjoyable. We can gather for worship and worship freely our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then we get to share that good news with other people. A message of salvation and forgiveness that truly changes people's lives. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We join together in singing the offertory. Maybe... I think we can do this one unaccompanied. Create in me. There it is. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And as noted in the bulletin, if you have not already done so, we invite you to place your offering in the offering plates on the table in the narthex. At this time, we will, re we will receive the offerings that have already been given.
In our special prayers today, we'll include a prayer for Beth Bogan, the daughter-in-law of Roger and Doreen Bogan, who will be undergoing surgery this week. Also for Gary Lenzen, who's dealing with kidney stones and some other health issues. I invite you to stand. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving us your holy word and the sacraments. Grant and preserve to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors to preach your word with power and help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Lord, in your mercy, send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Jesus and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, bestow your grace on all the nations of this earth. Bless especially our country and its inhabitants and those in authority over us. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may everywhere abound. Lord, in your mercy, Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine and every other evil. Protect and prosper those who work in their rightful callings and let the arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings that we bring before you today as our humble service. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, hear our prayers on behalf of Beth Bogan as she undergoes surgery this week. Bless her with faith in your loving kindness and protection, and give to the surgeon and medical teams the abilities needed so that according to your will, This surgery may help your servant to a full restoration of health and strength. Lord, in your mercy. You are the great physician of body and soul. You chasten and you heal. Show mercy to your servant, Gary Lenzen. You gave your son, Jesus, to bear our infirmities and sicknesses, so deal compassionately with him and bless him with your healing power. Lord, in your mercy. We are strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Help us, O Lord, by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work that you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God,
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We join in the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless, the, bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. us with your blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each your love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way, let not fear of death appall us, glad your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day. Please be seated. <clears throat> oh.
we could go back and sing that song we missed, but I think it's maybe a little warm, so we'll skip that. And uh, just a couple of announcements, and then we'll be on our way out into this world. Uh, this Tuesday, 7 p.m., we have the special concert coming up. Dave Anderson and Roger Walk will be here for an inspiring evening of music. And uh, they have quite a story to tell as well. Um, so we've just completed our worship service, one of the joys we have here on earth. And of course, whenever we gather for worship, the world tries to uh, intrude in our worship as well, right? You come for worship and then you're sitting there trying to worship God and you think about things out in the world when you're supposed to be concentrating on what's, uh, your, what you're doing in worship. The devil and our minds get the best of us and before we know it, we're thinking not about what we're worshiping, but what's going on in the world around us. It happens to all of us and, uh, it shouldn't. We should stay focused on our worship service, but um, still, even though that happens, it's still a great privilege to gather in God's house for worship and then leave this place and witness to the world around us.